Hello everybody, uh, today we start with a new chapter in chemistry for standard 10th ICSE that is electrolysis. We will be referring to Virab Dalal textbook and uh, we are on chapter number 5 electrolysis. So first of all is introduction. Uh, electrolysis, the word electrolysis can be split into two that is electro that is meaning electricity. Uh, that is flow of electrons and this is meaning pertaining to so something pertaining to electricity is called as electrolysis so electrolysis is something pertaining to electricity electrolyte and non electrolytes compounds which conduct electricity when dissolved in water or in molten state are called electrolytes for example NaCl, CuSO4 etc while those which do not conduct electricity are called as non electrolytes like alcohol, sugar solution, etc. So you can see that the substances can be differentiated based on two factors, two things. That is, one is whether it is allowing the electricity to pass through them. If they are allowing the electricity to pass through them in a liquid form or when they are in liquid form or in aqueous solution, the, then it is called as an electrolyte. Whereas the one which does not allow the electricity to pass through them, whether it be in a uh, sol uh, <coughs> liquid aqueous solution or in liquid state, then it is called as a non-electrolyte. So electrolyte and non-electrolyte. Now, when you talk about electrolysis, we have a general figure of electrolysis, or we can say the electrolytic cell. So we first of all discuss what is an electrolytic cell. So the electrolytic cell contains a vessel so this will be a vessel which is going to be there now this vessel will be containing liquid over here and this liquid is nothing but the aqueous solution or the liquid form which is called as the electrolyte so electrolyte is the substance through which the electricity is going to pass through now there will be two electrodes so these are the two rods which are place inside this electrolyte and these two rods are connected to the two terminals of a battery so we are going to connect it to uh, two terminals of a battery so the battery will be over here so this they have taken it as positive negative positive negative so this is battery and this is connected like this that means the one which is connected to the negative terminal is called as the cathode and the one which is connected to the positive terminal is called as the anode. So anode and cathode are the two uh, kinds of terminals or the two electrodes of the electrolysis or you can say electrolytic cell. So this is complete thing is called as electrolytic cell. Okay, this is the electrolytic cell. So this is the anode, this is the cathode, this is the electrolyte, uh, the battery of course this is the battery. There will also be a bulb over here. The bulb will indicate that the flow of current is going through. If the bulb is off that means the electrolysis has stopped So, or else we can say the electrolyte has gone over. Okay. So that is one thing the bulb will be indicating and uh, yeah this is the electrolytic cell. So yeah electrolytic cell and uh, what else yeah the two, two electrodes yeah this is called these are called as the electrodes okay electrodes which are positive and negative which is anode and cathode positive being anode and negative being cathode so electrolytic cell a non-conducting vessel containing the electrolyte in aqueous or fused state so electrolytic cell is this particular vessel which is a non-conducting vessel it could be glass or anything which is not a conductor and it is going to be uh, filled with an electrolyte containing the electrolyte that this can electrolyte could be a uh, aqueous solution of something or it could be a, a molten state of something or a fused state anode is the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery via a metal wire bulb and a key switch cathode is the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery when the switch is on the electrolyte starts dissociating current remaining the same 
the glow of the bulb indicates whether the electrolyte is a strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. So if I start this way, if I switch on it, this is the battery. If this bulb glows brightly, it means that the electrolyte over here is a good, good electrolyte. If this glows dimly, it is a weak electrolyte. And if it does not glow at all, this is a non-electrolyte. So the bulb over here will indicate whether the electrolyte used is a strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. So now let's see the terms involved in electrolysis. So this was the basic structure of electrolysis. This is how the electrolysis is done. We are just going to enhance the things uh, in the whole chapter. So basics are very simple that there is electricity flown a DC current that is from a battery given to the two electrodes into an electrolyte and the electrolytes what will happen? This electrolyte is going to split into two parts that is positive ion and negative ion. So there will be the uh, dissociation of, of the, the, so the compound over here and the positive ion will be attracted towards the negative terminal and the negative ion is going to be attracted towards the positive terminal. This is the basic kind of a working of an electrolytic cell or electrolysis. So electrolysis is a decomposition of a chemical compound electrolyte in the aqueous or fused or molten state by the passage of direct current cur electric current so resulting in discharge of ions as neutral atoms at the respective electrode. So this is a complete process. What is the process over here? The process is that what is electrolysis? It is the decomposition. What is the decomposition? A, B gives you A plus B. So decomposition of a electrolyte. Okay. What is electrolysis? Electrolysis is the decomposition of a chemical compound, which is nothing but the electrolyte. In an aqueous or fused state, okay, it will be in aqueous state or in a fused state by passage of direct current. So what is going to be there is a passage of direct current. It is resulting in discharge. Now what is going to happen is there will be a discharge of not the ions but the complete atoms. Okay, there will be neutral atoms. The discharge of ions as neutral atoms. The ions will be there but they will be converted into neutral atoms and then will be discharged at the respective electrodes. So decomposition electrolyte in aqueous or fused state by passage of electricity like Na will decompose to Na plus 1 and Cl minus 1. So at cathode uh, discharge ion will be Na plus plus electron will give you Na and at anode Cl minus minus electron will give you Cl. So that is uh, oxidation taking place at anode and reduction taking place at cathode. So electrolysis involves a chemical change and it is a hence a redox reaction that is oxidation reduction taking place simultaneously. So let's understand this thing a bit in detail right away. So first thing is that I know that when electrolysis, suppose there is NaCl over here, the aqueous solution of NaCl or uh, or maybe fused NaCl over here, molten MaCl over here. Now, when you are going to do the electrolysis, it is going to be this way that NaCl will form into Na plus 1 plus Cl minus 1. So, this is the first thing that is called as the decomposition reaction into ions is going to take place. Now this Na which is here, it is going to come to the cathode. So Na will come to the cathode. So there will be Na which will be coming to the cathode over here. So at cathode, what is going to happen is we know that cathode because the electrons are going to come from here. So electrons are going to be coming from the cathode over here. So that's why the Na plus 1, that means it already has lost one electron, is going to gain one electron over here and it is going to become Na. So hence at cathode, there is a gain of electron and hence it is called as reduction reaction. See, we already know that what is the reduction? There is gain of electrons and loss of electrons is oxidation. So at anode, it will be seen that the anode, the Cl minus will come at the anode, wherein the anode gives, accepts the electron. So that's why the anode may Cl minus 1 hai, wo apne electron lose karega and it will become Cl, which is nothing but oxidation. So that's why we see that 
इलेक्ट्रोलिसिस इज द रिडॉक्स रिएक्शन बिकॉज इलेक्ट्रोलिसिस के अंदर द रिडक्शन इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस एट द कैथोड एंड ऑक्सीडेशन इज गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस एट द एनोड सो द इलेक्ट्रोड वेयर ऑक्सीडेशन टेक्स प्लेस इज एनोड एंड द रिडक्शन इज टेकिंग प्लेस एट कैथोड सो इलेक्ट्रोलिसिस इन्वॉल्व द केमिकल चेंज एंड इज द रिडॉक्स रिएक्शन ऑक्सीडेशन एंड रिडक्शन now we differentiate between electrolyte and non electrolyte a chemical compound which conducts electricity in a fused or in aqueous solution state and undergo chemical decomposition due to the flow of current through it is called as a electrolyte so electrolyte will be the one which is allowing the electricity to pass through it and also it is going to decompose on when the current flows through it so that is the electrolyte are ionic compounds so electrolytes are always ionic compounds they are the one which already have ions in it and that's why the ions are going to dissociate okay then that's why there will be ionic compounds and the particles of the molecule are the electrolyte may be ions only or it could be ions with certain amount of molecules in them so if it is a weak electrolyte then it will be ions plus molecules but if it is a strong electrolyte it will be only made up of ions examples in acids are dilute hcl hno3 h2so4 alkalis koh naoh solutions ionic salts pb bb br2 o and cuso4 aqueous non electrolyte chemical compounds which do not conduct electricity in a fused or aqueous solution state and do not undergo chemical decomposition due to the flow of electrons through it are non electrolytes and they are normally covalent compounds so particles of non uh, electrolyte are molecules only so they will be having only molecules they do not have ions and because they do not have ions they cannot be segregated segregated or they cannot be separated into uh, near uh, to form into cations and anions and hence they cannot be uh, decomposed so that's why examples is pure or distilled water alcohol kerosene carbon dioxide liquid carbon tetrachloride glucose sucrose and sugar solution so these are the different examples of a non electrolyte that means if electricity is made to pass through them the, it does not allow the passage of electricity through them so that is why they are called as non electrolytes now the electrolytes can be further divided into two parts that is a strong electrolyte and a weak electrolyte so what's like so we can differentiate or we can uh, segregate the uh, electrolyte into two forms strong electrolyte and weak electrolyte strong electrolytes are electrolytes which allow a large amount of electricity to flow through them and hence are good conductors of electricity whereas weak electrolytes they are electrolytes which allow small amount of electricity to flow through them and hence are poor conductors of electricity so strong electrolyte they will be allowing a huge amount of current to flow through them whereas a weak electrolyte will allow only small amount of current to flow through them strong electrolyte are almost completely dissociated in fused or aqueous solution state whereas weak electrolytes are partially dissociated in fused or aqueous solution state particles in strong electrolyte are mainly ions only the strong electrolyte will be made up of only ions whereas a uh, particles uh, in case of weak electrolyte will be ions and unionized molecules examples generally all strong acids and bases are mo and most salts are strong electro acids uh, uh, most salts of strong acids are going to be strong electrolyte like dilute hcl h2so4 hno3 hbr hi naoh koh lioh solutions nacl kcl and na2cso4 uh, cuscl2 pbso4 pbno3 twice pbcbr2 agi all are cases of strong electrolyte whereas carbonic acetic acid oxalic acid formic acid nh4oh caoh twice mgoh twice sodium carbonate bicarbonate oxalate and formate are the examples of the weak electrolytes so because of weak electrolytes they will be having not only the ions but also molecules in them so all those ones which have got molecules in them will be all weak electrolytes next is electrolytic cell that is this particular device the complete device is the electrolytic cell the device in which the electricity is carried out is called as the electrolytic cell or voltmeter which contains electrolyte electrodes cathode and anode and the electrolytic solution so the electrolytic cell contains the two electrodes and the electrolytic solution 
we see the electrodes now the electrodes allow the electric current to enter or leave the electrolytic solution the electrodes are two in numbers and are made up of metal or carbon graphite carbon electrodes are used when the product formed during electrolysis react with the metallic electrodes the electrodes are connected to a battery via a key and a switch and depending on the connection of the battery are classified as anode or cathode so the electrodes as i say they are going to be first of all the one which is going to allow the current to enter through it and to go out of it so that's why the the, the electrodes are the entry and the exit of the current through the electrolytic solution and uh, they will be two in numbers one is connected to the positive terminal which is the anode and the one which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is the cathode now in case it's so it is going to happen that this particular anode or cathode is going to be sorry in case the electrolytic is such that the electrolyte is going to be producing some kind of a gas or some kind of a material which is going to react with the metal okay because these are electrodes are going to be of metal if uh, in case of so most of the cases so agar wo aisa hai ki wo metal ke sath mein reaction ka chances hai then these electrodes are made up of carbon okay then they are made up of graphite carbon so if they are made up of graphite carbon the gar graphite is a, a unique kind of a non metal which is able to conduct electricity that's why graphite carbon is the material used for the electrolysis electro electrode in case uh, the uh element which we are going to get over here is going to be reacting with the metal so graphite carbon are used when the uh it products formed during electrolysis react with metallic electrodes and uh, yeah they are connected to the battery and the switch depending on the connections whether it is anode or cathode so we have the positive electrode anode and the cathode is negative electrode so differentiating is as anode is the electrode connected to the positive terminal of the battery cathode is the electrode connected to the negative terminal of the battery the electrode hence requires a positive charge during electrolysis and hence ions which are very uh, charged positively negatively charged ions migrate to the anode whereas the electrode uh, hence acquired a negative charge during electrolysis and hence ions which are positively charged Uh, are that is cations migrate to the cathode so it is this way that because this is connected to the negative terminal so this is going to achieve the negative charge because it is a negative charge we know that opposite charge is going to be attracted so that's why ye negative hai isliye positive charge will be attracted to this thing so positive charge which is attracted over here are called as the cations cathode ke paas jo aayega wo cations anode ke paas bhi jayega wo anions okay कैथोड के पास में जो अट्रैक्ट होगा दैट विल बी आय अट्रैक्टेड टू वर्ज कैथोड आर कॉल एज कटायंस एंड आय अट्रैक्टेड टू वर्ज एनोड इज कॉल एज अन आय सो दैट इज हाउ दटायंस विल बी अट्रैक्टेड टू वर्ज कैथोड नेगेटिव टर्मिनल एंड एन आय विच आर बेसिकली नेगेटिव इन नेचर आर गोट टू बी अट्रैक्टेड टू वर्ज एनोड दिन डोनेट एक्सेस इलेक्ट्रॉन्स टू दी एनोड एंड आर ऑक्सीडाइज two neutral atoms you can see this the anode the uh, the um, anions over here are going to donate electrons and oxidize themselves okay so they are going to donate electrons to the anode and are oxidized whereas the cations are going to gain electron from the cathode and are getting get, get reduced to neutral atom so anode is oxidizing electrode whereas reducing electrode is the cathode so anode is oxidizing electrode by which the electron leave the electrolyte lose of loss of electron uh, for from an atom or ion is called as oxidation hence oxidation takes place at the anode the cl minus ele one electron will give you cl and uh, reducing electron the cathode is a reducing electrode to by which electron enter the electrolyte gain of electrons or by an atom or ion is called as reduction hence reduction takes place at the cathode so cathode is na plus plus electron will give you na ions they are atoms or group of atoms which carry a positive or negative charge and become free and mobile when an electric current is passed through an aqueous solution of a chemical compound 
Depending upon the electric charge, positive or negative, carried by an ion, an anion is further classified as anions and cations. So, any particular charge ion, okay, any particular ion which is charged with a positive or negative charge in it, it's called as a ion. So, any atom or a group of atom with a positive or negative charge on it is going to be called as a ion. And depending upon when the electricity is passed through it, if it is going to be uh, having a positive charge, then it will be a uh, anion. And if it sorry a cation and if it is a negative charge it will be a <coughs> anion. So anions are negative charge ions where cations are positive charge ions. Anions they migrate to the anode during electrolysis and are discharged at it. The uh, cations migrate to the cathode during electrolysis and are discharged at it. Anions they donate or lose electrons to the anode oxidation process and get oxidized to neutral atom. That is, an ion will become neutral when it is going to lose electron. Whereas they accept or gain electrons, cations are going to accept or gain electrons from the cathode. That is, the reduction process to get reduced to a neutral atom. Na plus plus electron is going to give you an a neutral atom. So, that is about the differentiation of anions and cations, and also the different, uh, the different terms which are going to be used in the electrolysis. Now let's see the mechanism of electrolysis. So the electrolysis is going to be uh, taken up as a mechanism because what exactly happens over there, how it happens, or what are characteristic features or the uh, factors which are affecting it. So let's go through that thing one by one. Mechanism of electrolysis. The process or mechanism of electrolysis was first explained by a Swedish chemist Avante Arrhenius in 1887. The main findings or postulates of these his theory are as follows. An electrolyte on dissolving in water dissociates into free cations, positive ions, and anions, negative ions, and allow the flow of electric current through it. So, first thing is that electrolyte on dissolving in water. Okay, whenever an electrolyte is going to dissolve in water, and it dissociates, it will dissociate into free cations and free anions. See cations, that is positive charge ions and anions, which will be negative charge ions. And when and allow, and this cations and cations are allowing the flow of electric current through them. It is the uh, this dissociation of a solution into anions and cations, which is going to bring about the movement or bring about the current flow. The degree of dissociation is extent of to which an electrolyte dissociates or breaks up into ions. So, the second thing is the degree of dissociation. Now, what will be the degree? Up to what limit will the dissociation take place? So, that is the extent to which. So, his theory stated that the extent to which is going to uh, 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 tell about the degree of dissociation that the extent to which the electrolyte dissociate or break up into ions is called as degree of dissociation. All ions carry an electric charge and are responsible for the flow of current through the solution. The amount of electricity conducted by the electrolyte depends upon the concentration of the ion in the solution. So, the degree of dissociation is also connected over here with the amount of flow of electrons or the flow of current through the electrolyte. It tells that all ions which are going to be there inside that particular electrolyte is going to take part in the flow of the current. Okay, so all ions are going to uh, carry a charge, electric charge, and are responsible for the flow of current through the solution. And the amount of current, okay, the amount of electric current conducted by the electrode depends upon the concentration of the ion in the solution. More the concentration of the ions means if there is more amount of ion present in the solution, more electric current will flow through it. That's why we said that good electrolytes are the one which are made up of only ions. The number of positive charge of an ion equals the number of negative charge and thus the solution is an electric electrolytic equilibrium so it is seen that like in this case also any cl ka na plus or cl jitna na plus milega utna hi cl minus milega 
Okay, so it shows that the number of positive ions present or the dissociated from a solution will be equal to the number of negative ions dissociated from that particular solution. Hence, the number of positive ions, charge of the ion equals the negative charge and thus solution is in electrolytic equilibrium. An equilibrium is also established between the ions produce an unionized molecule so that's why there will always be an equilibrium in the thing when the process of electrolysis is taking place now let's see the characteristics of an electrolysis first the passage of electricity through electrolyte causes the metallic ion cation to migrate towards the cathode and non-metallic ion anion to migrate towards the anode so that's the first thing the first thing what is going to happen is that in NaCl, the positive ion is going to get attracted towards the cathode and the negative ion is going to get attracted towards the anode. So the metallic metals, metals and hydrogen will always be traveling to the cathode, whereas all the non-metals will be traveling towards the anode. The preferential discharge of the ion depends on its position in an electrochemical series. Now, there is a electrochemical series over here. I'll just check it with very okay. Yeah, it is there later on in the chemical chemical series is there in the later part of the chapter. So the preferential discharge means suppose there are more than two positive ions or more than two negative ions present in an electrolyte. Like for example, we are taking an aqueous solution of NaCl. So in aqueous solution of NaCl, you will be not only be having NaCl, but will also be having H plus and OH minus apart from this part because water, it's an aqueous solution because the aqueous solution, that's why there will be ions of hydrogen, water can be split into H plus and OH minus and will be NaCl also N plus and Cl minus. So in this case, whether you are going to get Na at the cathode or H at the cathode or OH at the anode or SCL at the anode, that is going to depend upon the preferential discharge, which is going to be dependent on the electrochemical series. Like similar to the reactivity series, what you are having for metals, reaction of the metals. Similarly, you have got the electrochemical series in electrolysis. Now, electrochemical series in electrolysis is going to help you to find out which is the one which can be easily discharged at the respective electrodes. The number of electrons gained by the anode is equal to the number of electrons donated by the cathode. It is always going to be this way that the number of electrons which are going to be gained by the cathode will be equal to the number of electrons donated at the anode. So that number of electrons will always be the same at anode and cathode. The product of electrolysis are formed at the anode and cathode itself since the exchange of the electrodes take place only at the surface of the electrode. So, the products which are formed, there are no production of Na over here or Cl in this liquid. There is no production of any particular compound in this particular, any particular element in this liquid. It is only whatever Na is going to be formed. Na in the in the form that is a neutral atom is formed only at the cathode and Cl is only formed at the anode. So all the formation which is going to take place will only be at the electrode. So uh, the product of the electrolysis are formed at the cathode and anode itself. This is the exchange of electron takes place only in the surface of the electrodes. Only oxygen gas and metals are liberated at the cathode and hence called as electropositive elements. I told you earlier that all the metals and the hydrogen are going to be available at the cathode uh, and hence they are called as electropositive elements. And only non-metals are liberated at the anode and hence they are called as electronegative elements. So this is how we are going to have the different characteristics of electrolysis. We now move on to the next thing and that is electrolytic dissociation, the term. So I think this is a big one. So we will continue it in the next video.